Hello, this is Jennifer from Midwest Wilderness Connections. With peak spring warbler migration upon us in the Midwest, I will walk you through a tutorial on how to use the Warbler Guide app which is available for Android and iOS smartphones. I will be using the Android version of this app for this tutorial. There is a nominal upfront cost to the app, which is worth the expense if you are serious about tackling the challenge of Warbler ID. This is especially true for most of the Midwest, where a plethora of warbler species migrate through each spring and fall, which can become overwhelming for novice and even more experienced birders. The Warbler Guide was originally a book written by Tom Stevenson and Scott Whittle and was published by Princeton University Press in 2013. This book was the basis from which the Warbler Guide smartphone app was developed. While there are numerous extremely helpful resources in the book, the app allows you to quickly identify warblers on the go when thumbing through a book is typically not ideal. As you can see, the app opens to a default page with side views of the warblers in the guide. Let us start by exploring the app's menu by clicking the three horizontal bars on the upper left hand side of the screen. In the main menu, there are four main sections where you can specify which warblers the app should display. There are six view options to choose from based on how you viewed the warbler or how it is oriented in a photo you took. The first is a side view. This is the default view and is how most bird guides visually depict birds. The second option is face view. This view provides a close-up view of each warbler's face. The third option is a 3D view. The fourth option is a 45 degree view. This view provides a 45 degree angle view of warblers, which is a much more common vantage point when encountering most warblers in the field. The fifth option is the underside view. Let's face it, we are typically viewing warblers from the business end, which makes the underside and undertail view options so helpful. And this is the undertail view. In the next section, regarding season, you can filter the list of birds on the main screen by selecting the appropriate season for which you are identifying warblers. In the third section, the location option allows you to filter out species that do not occur in the region where you are birding. The four regions you can select from are Northeastern, Southeastern, Northwestern, or Southwestern United States. In the fourth section, which is Order, users can choose how warbler species are ordered on the main screen. The first option is Color Grouping. This option may be most helpful when the user is trying to compare a subset of species based on color. The next option is to view warblers in alphabetical order for those who choose to navigate the species by name. The third option is to sort the warblers by taxonomic groupings. The fifth section is the About Help section, which provides an overview of the app and provides a legend for range map colors and the icons that occur throughout the app. The sixth option on the menu is where you can check for updates to the app. Users can update the app via Wi-Fi using this last menu option. For the app to download images, sound, and other necessary content, there must be a minimum of 800 megabytes of free storage on the user's phone. Now that we've gone through the menu options, I am going to default back to the side view, use the spring summer season option, choose the northeast location, so we're covering the Midwest and defaulting back to order by color grouping. Now that user preferences have been set, let us dive into this handy tool by taking a closer look at the Cerulean Warbler on the main screen, which shows an image of the species. A gray circle with a musical note below the bird's image can be tapped to quickly and conveniently jump to the page to list of the species' different calls. If you tap on the species, a species profile page will open with five tabs users can peruse to help identify the warbler. The first default tab depicts a side view of the warbler at the top of the page. Below this image, the user can quickly scroll through images for comparison species that are similar in appearance to the selected warbler. On the Cerulean Warbler Species account, the default view is the side view. By touching the photo of the bird and dragging 
Users can scroll through different views that we covered when going through the menu options, such as the face view, the 3D view, the 45 degree angle view, the underside view, and the tail view. In 3D view, by clicking on the 3D icon in the upper right hand side of the page, users can rotate the image of the bird by tapping the bird and pulling in the direction in which the user would like to display the bird. If the user would like to do side-by-side -side comparisons with comparison species, they will click on the image of the comparison species. In this case, we will click on the black-throated blue warbler. As you can see, a side-by-side -side view of the cerulean warbler black-throated blue warbler are displayed. Again, if you click on the 3D icon that's in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, a user can tap on the image of the birds, drag those images, and can change the view of both species while trying to identify the bird. Overview tab contains icons for quick reference, as well as images and descriptions for male, female, and juvenile birds from various angles. The overview icons at the top of the screen depict the silhouette of the species profile. A color impression icon shows the general color of the bird and noticeable patterns within the bird's outline. Undertail pattern for the warbler. Range of the warbler, eastern or western United States, as indicated in green. Icon depicting where the warbler typically forges as indicated in green. For the cerulean warbler, the icon indicates that the species forages high in treetops. The other forging icons display in green can be midstory, understory, trunk and limbs, or ground. Behavior icons depict typical foraging behaviors for the warbler. The cerulean warbler icon indicates that the species sally feeds which indicates that it sits on a porch, flies into the air to catch an insect, then typically returns to the same perch. The other icons used in the app include hover gleaning, which indicates that the warbler hovers as it searches for insects to glean from vegetation and returns to the perch. Trunk creeping, which indicates that the warbler creeps along the tree trunk and large branches to forage. Walking on the ground indicates that the warbler is typically seen foraging on the ground. Tail bobbing or wagging, indicates whether the warbler typically bobs or wags its tail while foraging, or tail cocking, which indicates that the warbler typically cocks its tail upright while foraging. The calls tab allows users to play the various types of calls for the warbler. By clicking on the downward pointing carrot, Users can read a text description for the warbler's calls. While playing a song, other warblers with similar calls are listed below for quick comparison. For the Type A1 call, birds with similar songs include the black-throated blue Type A3, the Northern Parula Type B1, and the Blackburnian Warbler Type A. For each of the songs, you can choose the replay button, the first option, or you can slow the call down to half speed so that you can better identify individual components within the song. Comparison species listed change based on which call the user is listening to. The next tab is the Photos tab, which includes photos of study skins for the species, showing the range in colors between genders as well as photos of the species from numerous angles in the wild. Text below each of the photos describes important information to the user to know.
The next Aging Sexing tab provides photos and context that help users identify the sex and age of the warbler. The last tab is the Maps tab, which provides a map of the Warbler's range. Green Summer Range is depicted in dark yellow. Fringe Summer Range is depicted in light yellow. Migration Range is depicted in pink. Year-Round Range is depicted in green. Main Winter Range is depicted in dark purple. And Fringe Winter Range is depicted in light purple. Let's return to the main page. If users would like main page to show a sonogram view of calls. Rather than the species images, click on the musical note icon next to the filter funnel icon in the top right hand corner of the page. By clicking the funnel icon on the top right hand side of the screen, you can filter species shown on the main screen using several different options. The first option is song quality. Users are offered seven different on quality options. Buzzy, partly buzzy, complex, partly complex, clear, trilled, or partly trilled. The second option is pitch trend. Users who hear the song can use one of four pitch trends to filter the list of potential warblers. The options are rising, falling, steady, or variable. The next option for song sections. Users who hear the song can use one of seven song section selections to filter the list of potential warblers. To filter based on visual cues, you can click on the various regions of the bird diagram in the lower portion of the page. If users click on the head, they can choose from a menu of head characteristics to filter the list of potential warblers on the main page. The options to choose from are color, presence of an eye ring, presence of an eye arc, a dark crown, or supercilii. If users click on the throat, users can choose from a menu of throat colors to filter the list of potential warblers on the main page. If users click on the bird's wings and back, users can choose from a menu of characteristics on the warbler's wings and back to filter the list of potential warblers on the main page. Options include color, streaking, yellow wing bars, or white wing bars. If users tap on the underbelly of the bird, you can choose from a menu of characteristics on the underbelly to filter the list of potential warblers on the main page. The options include picking a color or choosing whether or not there is streaking on the underbelly. If users tap on the edges of the tail, they can choose from a menu of tail characteristics to filter the list of potential warblers on the main page. If users click on the long portion of the tail, users can filter the list of tail colors to fill down the list of potential warblers on the main page. Once all filtering options have been selected, click on the filtering funnel icon to see the filtered list of potential species. As an example, we will filter based on a bird with yellow on the back and wings. Users can reset filters by clicking on the filtering funnel and then hitting the reset button at the bottom of the filtering menu. Now that we have run through how this app functions, test it out. Leave comments if you'd like to let us know if you like the app, if you'd like to provide additional information that may help other users use this app to its fullest potential. Happy birding everyone! This is Jennifer from Midwest Wilderness Connections. Thanking you all for checking out this tutorial. If interested, additional tutorials can be viewed on Midwest Wilderness Connections YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook pages, as well as on our website blog.